part two of Lost Belongings can be seen next Saturday on Channel 4 at the same time of 9 o'clock, or this coming Tuesday on ITV, also at 9. In a moment, Saturday Live bows out with Stavros, star turn on 45 pints, if they're capable, US comedian Rick DeCumman and the inspirational choir, whilst talking one-to-one -one with Parkinson on ITV is Buddy Rich. Ah, the romance of flight. If this is the kind of feeling you have about flying, maybe it's time you looked at Air Canada. You see, we try to treat you as an individual. So, if you'd like to feel different about flying, look to Air Canada for a breath of fresh air. At Barclays, we understand that businessmen often need more than just our money. That's why our managers visit thousands of businesses every week. That's why we have teams of specialist advisors. And that's why we spend so much time getting to know your plans for the future. It's not surprising then that at Barclays we're also helping thousands of small businesses grow bigger. Helping many of the country's most important industries become even more successful and committing a massive 16 billion pounds to building up British business. Barclays, we'll look at your business, not just your balance sheet. This week, don't take chances. Take TV Times, it's full of big stories. Tom Jones tells how he found both superstardom and loneliness in America. After a life of turmoil and broken marriages, Tony Curtis finds peace with his painting. Beauty and the Beast, fight it out next Tuesday. See how Hagler and Leonard shape up and collect this exclusive star portrait. Also, £15,000 worth of furniture to be won. This week, don't take a chance, take TV Times. TV Times! On for now, time to party party with Saturday Live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, sadly, 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 the last in our present series of Saturday Live. We had a good time so far. We know we're going to keep it up till the end of this one. We think you're going to enjoy it. But of course, not everyone enjoying things this week. Poor old Ron Reagan, seriously, more trouble. They got trouble with the new embassy in Moscow. It cost 500 million pounds and they're going to have to pull it down. Well, of course it was so expensive. I mean, Soviet listening devices do not come cheap. <laughs> They should have sent it a bill, but look, we never asked for bugs in a bathroom, just in the bedrooms and in the main state room. <laughs> dear, oh dear, they can't even move in. Poor old Schultz, he's having a high-level summit over in Moscow. He's got to take his own caravan, because he can't trust his own embassy. He's taking his own caravan. Well, very dignified for a senior American citizen, I must say. Sitting on the pavement with his uh, Heinz beans and bacon burgers bubbling on the primus. <laughs> he's got his trousers hanging on a lamppost outside his caravan. Where's he going to empty his L-Sand? 
<laughs> I hope not over Gorbachev. Are we seriously in trouble, are we? Oh, better not improvise. That was seriously scatological. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to thank a lot for the Americans because I always slag them off. But I mean, a lot of their culture is good. We love their films. We go to see their films. We love their pop music. We got a film over at the moment, Platoon, anti-war. Good to see it. Good, an anti-war film. But the poster says the first casualty of war is innocence. Very nice indeed, but I was under the impression that the first casualties of that particular war were about three million Vietnamese citizens. But I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I don't know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that show got an Oscar. It did. It got an Oscar and well deserved. It did. It's a good film and well deserved to get an Oscar. But I think the speech must have been a bit of a laugh. We'd like to thank the corpses of Southeast Asia for making this film possible. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Now then, poor old Mrs. Thatch. Mrs. Thatch is in big, deep, humiliating trouble. And why? Because her company of, of MPs are just messing around. Some of them are a bit dodgy with the old shares. Some of them are a bit dodgy with the old trousers. A lot of trouble. Right? A lot of trouble. And she's been told to keep her house in order. She's been told, keep your house in order. Well, I think what she should do is keep old Harvo Procto on. What she should do is, so when all the others get in a bit of dodgy old shirty, Harvey can give them a bit of a spank, can't he? Keep it in the family. That's what it's about. Except old Keith Best, old Keith Best, the MP, he'd have to have six spankings, wouldn't he? After all, he had six addresses, six names, six year applications and 6,000 quid profit. Why shouldn't he have six spankings? He's worked hard, he deserves it. He says, he says it was a mistake. I said this last week, he's sticking to the story. It was a mistake. Well, I understand, it's an easy one to make. I mean, must happen to you. You're sitting at home doing a washing up, suddenly you just write off an illegal share application. I mean, you know, you go to another of your addresses, you're doing a little bit of hoovering and, oh, an illegal share application is up. That was all the time, we understand. Of course it was a mistake. He says it's been proved that so many people made the same mistake that that proves how innocent it was. Well, that's the same thing. Oh, hundreds of thousands of people in prison saying, come on, Keith, there's hundreds of thousands of us. Maybe we all just made a mistake. The only mistake they made was the one Keith made, getting caught. Your problem, mate. Wriggle out of that one. Anyway, so we also want to talk, we want to talk about Willie Whitelaw. Because Willie Whitelaw has done some good things. Willie Whitelaw has done some good things. And just at the moment, he has come out and he has said, Edwina Curry was wrong with all that dietary chat she did. It was about six weeks ago. It's only just sunk through the brandy, you know. But <laughs> she said it was wrong. He has said, personally, he likes to stuff loads and loads and loads of grub and tuck and food and meat down his neck. Well, thanks for telling us, Willie. We would never have noticed. <laughs> oh, you're such a slim, svelte, gazelle-like little creature, aren't you? Of course you are. It's very nice to hear that a Tory's coming out against eating too much because, old. Oh, I mean, it's a bit hypocritical, isn't it? The porkiest political party in the entire world going on about eating too much. I mean, the party where a third chin is considered a career decision. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Did you see Nigel Lawson on the old, uh, the old budget? Dear, oh dear, I'm not normally in to take the mic out of people's figures because shape. I don't want to be a sizist or a shapist, but seriously, you see that, all them doubles, eh? All that? I mean, his mouth has finally got onto the summing up about incomes and old age pensions and his chin's still finishing a bit about taxing fags. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we know we're going to have a good show tonight. This is very, very big for us. We want to make it an important one. Lots and lots of fun, lots and lots of laughs. Right now, something very special. Old friends of Saturday Live. We think they're brilliant. Let's kick off with the best, the inspirational choir! <laughs>
Now you don't kick off a show any better than that. That was the inspirational choir. Everybody here, Dougie, we hope it was great for you at home. We know it was. Blew my hair back. Fantastic stuff. Gonna see him again later on in a show. Looking forward to that. Right now, we want to welcome Stavros! <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a very sad day today because how come we sell up moving out? Yeah, pull up stamps and bugger off, innit? <laughs> well, the kebab is herself, since all the area we live in has been invaded by puppies. All Bethnal Green Hackney, now full of bloody puppies. <laughs> you know these puppies? Ponzi upwardly mobile peeps. <laughs> they come over here. I'm very sorry, viewers at home. Everybody is giving me the clap here. <laughs> they come over here, and now everything got top posh snob, innit? <laughs> you can always tell these puppies when they come here because they all look at my kebab and say, Ugh, meat. <laughs> no, just a load of cold saw, please. <laughs> I say, cold saw, okay, you want a big Porsche? They say, no, I already got a big Porsche and a Golf GTI. <laughs> they say, we don't like this place because it's no wino bar. I say, yeah, it is. I bought all the winos last week. <laughs> and when they try to pay, they say, hello, you, do you know me, American Express? I say, no, I don't know you, and it won't do bloody nice because I don't take. <laughs> no fast bloody Alan Wicker card, innit? <laughs> a bloke came in last night looking well flipping lardy blood pots. <laughs> I say, what you do? He say, I'm a merchant banker. I was surprised he knew any rhyming slang. <laughs> At least it proved he was a genuine cock. <laughs> well, we had enough, me and her inside the doors. We got up a new shop back where we used to live, in the glorious Sandrine styles. House of dogs, Dan Lana's way. Yeah? <laughs> Till we get sorted out, we're gonna have to stay with her inside the doors, his old foxes. But I'm a bit scared about this because her mum, she's very happy to have us, she say, and she's gonna treat us like royalty. Like royalty? Perhaps she's gonna say we're dead and lock us up for 40 years in some <laughs> in, in some fruit gum farm, innit? <laughs> it's a terrible thing that about the Queen Mum, poor old Queen Mum. I think she ignored the wise old saying, don't forget the fruit gums, Mum. <laughs> well, time for me to go. So I'm allowed to leave you with a couple of words my old father used to say to me. Bug it off, Stavros. <laughs> Always a pleasure to hear Harry Stavros and feel that's the last time you're going to hear him live on Saturday Live for a while, but you can catch him live all over the country on tour this spring. Bit of a plug there, but then again, he's a mate. Right now, we've got an excellent comedian. This guy's from Canada. The guy's so good, we're going to put him right up the top, cheer up the show in a big way. Please welcome Rick Dukeman. Thank you, thank you. Keep it going for Ben Elton, ladies and gentlemen, and his now famous suit and tie. Keep it going, everybody. Ben Elton, what a talent, unbelievable. Saturday Live, a great show, and I've watched tapes of the show. We don't get it in Canada. The best audience of any television show I've ever seen, really. You guys are unbelievable. And, yeah, yeah. And I, and I don't just say that to kiss up to you to get the really big laughs, either. No, I wouldn't do that. Because it's a great, great host, great show, great audience. Then someone explained to me the 20-foot inflatable weasel. What is the deal here? <laughs> what, how do you make something like that, and how do you blow something like that up? <laughs> what do you do for a living? I, uh, a little blow, uh... <laughs> I, blow, I, I do something with weasels, okay? <laughs> I love London. I've been having a great time here, but the rain, the rain is unbelievable. Really, it rains too much, and you don't have enough drainage. Uh, I'm trying to get onto the freeway, uh, I guess a couple days ago, there's salmon jumping past my car. <laughs> and it rains Perrier in Mayfair. 
They got the road crew out there squeezing lemon onto the freeway and the, the traffic, I love the traffic here. I like the way that you can slop, slow down, turn or go on a red, yellow or green light. It just simplifies the whole driving process. I like the way the dotted lines in the road are just suggestions if you wanted to use them. Oh, London. But the money, could you make the money a little bigger? Do you think that'd be possible? Did they have a bunch of old manhole covers laying around and they went to uh, 10p coins, yeah. And what is a 50 pence coin? This looks like some kind of kung fu death throwing weapon. <laughs> oh, 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 I got it in the eye with a 50p. I'm okay, I'm okay though. I'm all right. Oh man, Lady Die, I've been here four days. I'm already sick of seeing this woman, okay? Is she having that? Is, is she more important than everything in the world? I mean, you see, new, you see news reports like nuclear war in Europe, but now Lady Di's new haircut. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, Lady Di shook hands with an AIDS victim and she didn't wear a glove. Big deal. <laughs> this chick has had sex with Prince Charles. Shaking hands with an AIDS victim is nothing at this point. <laughs> Canada, I wonder, with the parliamentary system, why do we have the royal family? Why do we keep them around? And then it hit me. Comedy. Comedy value. <laughs> what is this two lost cousin deal? Come on, the royal family keeps track of everybody from day one. If one cousin fifth time removed farted like in 1962, there's a plaque there. Oh, 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 we lost two cousins. We just lost them. Come on. This is the queen mother's brother's kids. So it was the king's brother-in-law's kids and they just lost them. Well, doesn't somebody at a Christmas dinner sometime go... <laughs> Didn't you have a couple girls? Yeah, the ones that drooled. Did you have... <laughs> I done all the sightseeing things. I went and saw the changing of the guard. Boy, this is exciting. <laughs> And what is the deal with the hats these guys are wearing? I have the big fur things. I ask them, what are they? Oh, it's tradition. Oh, tradition. Tradition, is it? Well, oh, do you go home from work in an ox cart, pal? So is your wife still cooking you supper on a peat moss fire? Get yourself a ball cap, okay? And these things look like they would suck up about 200 pounds of rain. You see these things? Protecting the queen, it's raining out now. I hope someone's ready to kill her now. And with the Tower of London, Great tradition there, great tradition. Do you know that they have ravens there? And if the, if the ravens leave the tower, the tower will collapse. Have you been there? Their wings are clipped, okay? <laughs> these birds are gonna need a hot air balloon to get out of this place. What are they expecting these birds to hitchhike out of the joint? Yeah. There's ravens all over the tower walking around going, oh, Charlie, my feet are sore. <laughs> right, we we're supposed to fly or something. This walking is killing me. <laughs> great to be here, Prince Charles. Did you hear that he talks to plants? Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that Prince Charles talks to plants? Yeah. 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 I got 300 people looking at me going... <laughs> well, we heard he talked. <laughs> <laughs> he talks to plants! Now, come on. I, I'll go along with that. Maybe plants can understand us, but if you assume they understand us, why do you have to assume that you have to be nice to them? Wouldn't they grow if you came up behind them with a blowtorch and a butcher knife? You're gonna grow, aren't you? A little green bastard. Don't just give them the water. Turn the heat in the house up to about 150. You're thirsty, aren't you? You'd have a little drink, wouldn't you? Yeah? Then bloom. You want big bushy plants? Let them watch you make salad. <laughs> Friend of yours? Yeah. I just, uh, I just visited my parents. I uh, saw them on the way here. Uh, it was great because I hadn't seen them since Christmas when they came to visit me at my house, which was a great experience because when I lived at home, my parents were always saying to me, if you live under our roof, you will obey our rules. So it's great. I pick them up at the airport. They're going into my house. I'm carrying their bags in and a phrase keeps going over and over in my mind. My house, my rules. Dad, you will drink milk out of the jug and only out of the jug. <laughs> Ma, I love you, but if I ever catch you closing the fridge door all the way, your little flabby ass is grounded. <laughs> First 
morning for breakfast, we had Smarties and chocolate milk. <laughs> well, you eat those green ones now, they're good for you. <laughs> Sometimes life is too perfect. My folks want to go see the country, so we're driving along there. My dad is sitting in the front seat beside me. He said, Rick, could you pull over to this next service station? I said, why? He said, I have to go to the bathroom. I said, you should have thought of that before we left home. <laughs> What is this? Well, my, my time is up. You're telling me my time is up? Well, listen, this is a live show, and if I want to do another 20 minutes, what are you guys going to do? pretty good. I think you enjoyed that. I did too. And uh, also, we better watch out when we get outside because we're all going to the Tower of London together, all right? We got family, you look laughing at that, even though he said it, we're all going together. Don't cut our heads off. Now, welcome to the new music, new band. We know you're going to enjoy. I'm always a pleasure to introduce live rock and roll in the studio. Let's enjoy the boys' wonder! Once upon a time, there was an old man who lived with his two sons. I'm off to a residential cause for double-entry bookkeeping. <clears throat> Take this money and see what you can earn with it whilst I'm away. Sometime later, he returned. Yes, Walter? 
Papa, I buried my money in a building society where it sat accumulating interest. Well done. As I've always said, better safe than sorry. Oh. And William, for once, let's hope you've shown some of your brother's good sense. Dad, I put my money in Lloyd's Bank High Interest Check Account and used their new unit trust scheme to invest in Britain and the rest of the world. Unit trusts from a bank? I suppose they'd be selling shares next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, actually, they already do. Lloyd's Bank new share deal scheme. So far, I've done rather well out of it. Uh, William! Oh, just as I've always maintained. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Well, bring on the black horse. Lloyd's Bank. A thoroughbred amongst banks. Sure is dead around here. Thank you, honey. Why don't you all go on home? Who the heck are you? I'm the twin brother you never knew you had. Come to help you search for Daddy. Yeah, well, forget it. Daddy's gone. <laughs> Daddy? Daddy! Good to see you, boys. How's your mother, huh? <laughs> sure have missed her. <laughs> Darling! Darling! <laughs> Now we're all together. How are we gonna rescue Emma Lou? Poor Emmy Lou. <gasps> Emma Lou! Okay, so that's Blair, who lost his memory for 20 years. And that's Jolene, who slept through the last six episodes. Who's that guy who's just been shot? That was the scriptwriter. You should never have let you see Dolly Parton on your own. Madame Two Swords, where wax works. Treat yourself to a refreshing twist of deodorants from Old Spice. You won't catch a pizza in a cage, and its roots sure ain't in a tree. Our hut is the place to find pizza Topped any way that you want it to be Go this pizza this and pizza that Our pan pizza's only got one habitat A pizza's home is a hut Every week, Cathay Pacific fly non-stop to Hong Kong but from April the 3rd, we're adding a second non-stop flight. And then a third in July. Cathay Pacific. Fly non-stop and arrive in better shape. Ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of the 10th Saturday Live. We hope you're enjoying it at home. We are doing so here. Great band, get to hear some new music. Nice tie. I mean, what are you trying to say with sex written on your thigh? You know, go through a few other bodily functions. Mastication, perspiration. You know, we may just chose sex today. You know, nice stuff. Anyway, good music. Good to hear the boys wonder playing live all over London. At the moment, I think we're probably going around the country try and catch them. Anyway, I do have to say that before it came out, yesterday, in fact, I saw an advert for TVs on the telly. TVs, of course, interest me because I work on them. And they were going on and on and on about how we've got clear picture, we've got good colour. Now, we've got a flatter, squarer screen. Why? I mean, when you're watching a film, you think, well, not a bad film, well, nice colour, nice bit. I wish the screen was a bit flatter and square. <laughs> oh, sure. They just invent a need and then, oh, God, it wasn't very flat, is it? No. <laughs> oh, we've got a very square one. It's just more snobbery. There's lots of things about opinions and images come out of the tele. A lot of opinion polls at the moment. Millions of opinion polls. The idea of opinion polls is they sponsor them so much. And when one party's ahead and the paper likes that party, they trump it. Because the idea is we'll all think, oh, my God, everybody else thinks that, so I'd better think it too. That's not what people do at all. I mean, you're watching an advert. There's an ad at the moment. It's a sort of opinion poll in a way. It's all about how people drink their tea. Lots of different practs going on about how they like it. They go, ooh, out of a cup with a saucer. Lots of sugar. Oh, warm and wet. Just for me. I like my milk. You can drink it out of a mug. What's that about? What are they talking about? They're giving us advice. We know you can drink it out of a mug. 
I mean, oh, I'll drink it out of a mug now. Nice advice, mate. I used to drink it out of a cat's bottom, but now I use the mug. <laughs> the bowls are meaningless. Don't believe them. Whatever party they support, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to go far into the future to look at the present. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Antiques Roadshow. I'm Angus Whatever. And I'm Pippa Draycott. And this week, uh, we're coming from the beautiful Suffolk town of Sizewell, where the towering ruins of Sizewell's A and B stand, glowing testament to the nuclear age. As indeed do the babies still being born with three heads. <laughs> and of course, the warm, welcoming glow of the cat. So, it's a lovely spot. And now, to business. We have, of course, uncovered a wealth of antiques here, some of them dating as far back as the late 20th century. Uh, what have we seen so far, Angus? Well, you know what we've seen. You, you were here. Yes, yes, but some of the ladies and gentlemen and the droids and zombies have just joined us from Venus, don't know, do they? <laughs> well, uh, some really fascinating stuff has turned up. A young lady brought, us, brought in a showroom condition motor car, uh, which was the mode of transport uh, of that time. That must be something rather rare. Uh, fairly rare. Uh, it was, of course, a Renault 25. Um, and, <laughs> as it happens, all Renault 25s are in showroom condition because uh, the adverts they used in the 1980s were so nauseating that they never sold a single car. <laughs> It was an unbeatable combination of snobbery and sexism, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Really appalling acting. Yes, and quite rightly, as you say, appalling, as you pointed out, acting, yes. Now, a great many people have brought in one or two of these. These are called Supolard albums. Um, <laughs> now, they've all been electrostatically dated, and one of the interesting things about it is none of them was ever played more than once. <laughs> Now, if you should happen to find at home a copy that you can prove has been played twice, then I think that'll be a priceless asset. Yes. You know right? Now, I've been particularly taken uh, with this little chap. Uh, this is a bottle of shaken vac. <laughs> um, and it seems really that after all these centuries, it still puts the freshness back. It, it, made, me, it made me want to dance, as if I really wanted to do the shaken vac. <laughs> How wonderful. I find the nicest part of our job is the way hand reaches out to hand over the centuries. And the pay. Yes, I like the pay as well. You're quite right to point out the pay. <laughs> so, now let's go straight to the first of our guests, Mr Carter. Now, Mr Carter, what have you got for us today? Well, uh, well, Pepper, uh, I, was, uh, I was rummaging about in my attic. You know how you do. Mm. No, not really. I live in a podule. Oh, well, well, whatever. I, I was rummaging about and I, I came up with this. I don't know what it is, but oh, I, I hope my. it's worth a lot. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Oh, oh my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. That sounds exciting. Would you know what it is, then? No, I've never seen one before. <laughs> uh, you make it yeah, well, yeah, may I? Yes, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I happen to know. I'll tell you what this is. This is a cup. Oh. Uh, this is a polystyrene cup. Polystyrene? Maybe <laughs> uh, a polystyrene cup. Polystyrene. <laughs> People do slip at a time. Yes. Um, do you notice a very attractive feature? Here's the cigarette end that's been put, put, put out inside it. Very attractive and make it very valuable. Oh, and look, and what have we here? We can see on the side that some world weary 20th century artisan has, has scored the word knob on the side. <laughs> Just as you or I would do today. Oh. Well, I wouldn't. No, I must say, I wouldn't either. <laughs> no, well, whatever. Um, now, of course, at the time, these were produced absolutely in their billions uh, until it was found that they caused skin cancer. <laughs> oh, how charming. It's a wonderful piece. Yes, it? well, it was something about the, uh, the chemical process uh, used in their manufacture which destroyed the ozone layer, which filters the sun's deadly rays, which is uh, why to this day we still all wear plastic skins. Oh, so really this rather charming polystyrene or polystyrene cup uh, oh, okay. is uh, <laughs> something of a tinker, isn't it? Bit of a tinker, yes. Yes, yes. well. Have you got something else for us? Mr. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I was running about in my garden. You know how you do. No, as I say, I live in a podule. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, while it's the garden, I, I started rummaging about in my trousers. You, you know how you do. Oh, yes, I'm with you there. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I discovered something rather strange. Uh, uh, James Callaghan's memoirs. Uh, oh, the memoirs of James Callaghan. Now, this is fascinating. This tells us a lot about the unchanging face of history. You see, in 1987, nobody was remotely interested in this book, uh, and it's still the same today. <laughs> I think it's time for us to meet Mr. Selwyn. Mr. Selwyn. Ah, good evening, uh, Pippa Angus. Um, I'm wondering if you could tell me whether these are worth it. Well, let's have a look. Now, oh, I say, this is very exciting. This is very... Do you know what these are? I'm afraid I don't. I shall no. tell you what these are. This is very exciting. These are deeds to national industries and assets. What have we got here? We've got telephones, uh, gas, prisons, hospitals. This... 
This is really most extraordinarily important. You see, what happened here is that these were all sold off mm -hmm. in the late 1980s. Oh, hmm. All of them just sold off. Good lordy, but stuff the history. What are they worth in cash? Well, at the time, uh, they were priceless, but for some incomprehensible reason, lost to us now, they were flogged off at a fraction of their worth uh, in what were called share opportunities, something called popular capitalism. Uh, unfortunately, so many MPs and bankers cheated that only a very few people got a look in at the end, uh, until they became eventually uh, completely worthless, really. Worthless? <laughs> <laughs> That brings us to the end of yet another edition of Antiques Roadshow. Um, next Solar Week uh, on Space Channel One, uh, we'll be having a look at that wonderful costume historical drama Star Trek. Until then, bye 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 bye. Bye bye. Yes, indeed, a little bit of satire there. Thank you, drama from a lot of us. Heavy-handed, but we enjoyed the costumes. Thank you very much. Right now, we're going to enjoy some comedy from an excellent comedian. Please enjoy, if he's finished his drink, Frank Hobbes. <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed, Ben. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I, I hope I can get through my set this evening because... I'm in a bit of a bad way. I'm a bit depressed, ladies and gentlemen, because actually it was a year ago today that my wife left me. She left me, that's right. She left me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why. I know sometimes, sometimes I had too much to drink and, and sometimes I threw up. <laughs> sometimes while I was kissing her, admittedly, but... <laughs> but I rubber, ladies and gentlemen, I rubber, and nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Sheets, pillowcases. <laughs> My vest, they're all just as she left them. You know, you know, I feel so sentimental about her. I still use her false teeth as a butter dish, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's how much I care. Anyway, that's enough about me. Let's get on with the act. And, and I'd like to change the pace a little bit and do a bit, of, a bit of conjuring for you, ladies and gentlemen, a bit of conjuring. And for this, I'm going to require, I'm going to require the assistance of a, victor, of a volunteer. Of a volunteer from the audience. You, sir. Give them a round of applause, because here they come, that's your counter. That's the way. <laughs> Sit yourself down, very nicely done. Obviously no stranger to furniture, ladies and gentlemen. Now, sir, would you like to tell the audience, what's your name, please? It's Jeff. It's Jeff? <laughs> Obviously just Jeff. Shall we call you Jeff? You can, yeah. We'll call you Jeff. Jeff, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff, where are you from, Jeff? I'm from the middle of London, West One. W One. Well, that's not very interesting, is it? So uh, <laughs> we'll move swiftly on. And would you like to tell the audience, Jeff, have we ever met before? No. No, we haven't. Because if we had met before, ladies and gentlemen, you can guarantee that Jeff here would never ever have come up here on stage with me <laughs> tonight. Because what we are about to do is very, very dangerous indeed. And if it goes wrong. It could result in Jeff here being left completely deaf, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> deaf Jeff. <laughs> because I am about to attempt to produce from Jeff's ear a three-piece suite. <laughs> ah, and a canteen of cutlery, ladies and gentlemen. And to assist me in this endeavour, I shall be using this tube of KY jerry. <laughs> Which is some of you seem to recognise. <laughs> Possibly this very tube, I don't know who can tell. No, come on, ladies and gentlemen, pull yourselves together, because of course I'm not going to produce furniture from Jeff's ear. How would I get it all home? <laughs> no, what we're going to do is much simpler than that. I shall, I shall perform a little routine and ask Jeff here to copy what I've just done. Now, what could be easier than that, eh, Jeff? Absolutely. No. <laughs> Now, Jeff, watch closely because this is what I want you to do. I'll demonstrate. Here we go. <laughs> now you do it, Jeff. Now, Jeff. Got a nice head on it, doesn't it? My word. Well. <laughs> no. uh, ben Elton's kestrel, is it? <laughs> no, no, it'll be a pint of raga, I think, Jeff. It's, uh... Now, Jeff, I can see you're keen to dive in there, but before you do, before you do, let me just ask you one little question. Jeff, 
Do you want to do it? No. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, make your mind up. Don't know. <laughs> shilly shaggy. Let's ask the audience what they think. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think he should do it? Yes! You vicious sods. <laughs> It's only really funny because it's happening to somebody else, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Well, there you go, Jeff. The audience says yes. I don't know if you're going to, to fry in the face of public opinion like this, but I don't want to force you to do something you don't want to do. So, Jeff, it is entirely up to you. Do you want to do it? Yes. <laughs> is, is this the pressure of live television on you, Jeff? Is this what it can do to people? I, Jeff, I don't want to force you into anything. It is entirely up to you for the last time, and you're going to have to stick by this answer now. Jeff, do you want to do it? Yes. Well, Jeff, people don't usually say that, do they? Really? <laughs> and for a very good reason. Right then, Jeff, don't hang about. You've got the audience's sympathy, but it won't last for long, I can tell you that. So, off you go, Jeff. was disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Jeff, you're a complete maniac. Give him another round of applause. Off you go. <laughs> and after all that, after all that, he still wanted to hold hands, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's rather sweet. Anyway, that's, that's about the size of it. But actually, before I go, I feel I know you a little bit better, so I'd like to confide a wee bit more, if you don't mind, about my wife. Can you believe, she used to say to me, she said to me, Frank, you're no good sexually. You're no good sexually, you come too early. <laughs> so I'd hang around outside the house till two or three in the morning. <laughs> Didn't seem to help at all. And then she'd say, no, Frank, you know, you misunderstood me. Coming is a euphemism. A euphemism? After 28 pints of rag, it's a bloody miracle as well. <laughs> I can tell you that. Do you know, I'll, I'll tell you what the last thing was that she said to me before she left. She said, Frank, I want to have a family, but I don't want you to be in it. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. You've been... You've been... Well, you've been, haven't you? And I'm going to go. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, that was Frank Hosses, alias... John Sparks, who you may recognise as Shadwell from Kick Up the Eighters. John Sparks there. In all the times I've seen that act, no one has ever drunk the lager. Very, very weird. Changed the whole nature of the set. Very nice indeed. And it just goes to show somebody was sensible. You can't get it from saliva. So there you go. Not saying you got it, John, but there you go. <laughs> anyway, nice one. We can do what Lady Di can do. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we want to remind you, of course, it's Eurovision Song Contest week. And we've got one late entry just to show how classy the competition has been on Wogan the last couple of weeks. Please welcome Star Turn on 45 Pints. Start the clap machine, Johnny. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, madam and messieurs, dames and herons, and welcome to the Song for Europe, live from Whitley Bay. Last night's winner has been counted out, and we've recounted all the votes, and the winning song to represent Great Britain in Whitley Bay in Belgium next month is Ding Dong Ding Dong by Star. It's a good one, that's what it is. And it's power to all the brotherhood man! 
Top football managers Ron Smart and Ron Slack are in the race to sign United Star Play. So it's the early morning shuttle to Manchester. Using Hertz Super Shuttle Drive, Ron Smart rents his car in the British Airways departure lounge. He gets Hertz computerized driving directions and a rate that includes everything, even petrol. Ron Slack will rent his car in Manchester. On arrival, while Ron Slack is queuing to do his paperwork, Ron Smart walks straight to his car. Ron Slack has to rely on local driving directions. So Ron Smart beats his rival by a short head thanks to Hertz. And Ron Slack beats his head until it hurts. Using his Hertz optional phone, Ron Smart gives his chairman the good news. But Ron Slack will have to wait to break the news of his signing. You'll fly with Hertz Super Shuttle Drive. Old El Paso Tacos. One simply fills the taco with mince, lettuce, cheese, and chopped tomato. The Old El Paso kit contains 12 taco shells, taco seasoning mix, and a can of taco sauce. Just follow the instructions. <laughs> Old El Paso tacos. They certainly bring out the old Latin temperament. Stanley. The best tools you can lay hands on. Do you really want to hurt Time for a little culture. Culture Club with 12 worldwide hits from their first four years. All your favourite songs on one stunning album, this time. Now's the time to get the album cassette and compact disc at our price. Do you know me? This guy's do. They told me I'm too old to learn this game. He says maybe I should take up golf. Well, one thing I learned early on, no matter how well I play in the tournaments around the world, I cannot hand in a better car than this, the American Express card. Apply for the American Express card today. The American Express card, don't leave home without it. You won't catch a pizza in a cage, and its roots jaw ain't in a tree. Our hut is the place to find pizza. Topped any way that you want it to be No, there's pizza this and pizza that Our pan pizza's only got one habitat A pizza's home is a hut Calibre from Guinness No alcohol No joke Extra rich, not a hype, just my type. Cream silk conditioner, which one's your type? Hello, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, we have only one third to go. It makes me very sad, but right now, I want to say, in all the time, all the two and a half hours of stand-up comedy I've done this series, I have never once used an autocue. I'm about to use an autocue because I have to get the words of something right. So I'm reading this through the autocue, through the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, last week a comedian read out an article parodying journalism. Unfortunately, he pretended this article came from a real paper called the Hounslow Informer. The article was totally fictitious and had no actual connection with the Hounslow Informer or any other newspaper. We apologise unreservedly for suggesting it did. End of autocue. Mind you, it's nice to know the old show still got teeth, eh? Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that was true, we do apologise. Will you now please welcome a magic cat? This one's pretty strange. Try and dig it. You know you're gonna because it's Rich Morata and Twilight Zone! Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you? Good evening, my name's Rich Morata. That's my lovely assistant, Twyla's own, and boy, have we got a show for you. We've got magic, we've got comedy, we've got jokes, we've got illusions. We've got eight minutes of action-packed entertainment for you, and believe it or not, we've crammed it all into an hour and a half. <laughs> I read in the paper today, the odds of flying on an airplane on which someone is carrying a bomb is one in a hundred. But the odds of flying on an airplane in which two people are carrying bombs only one in 10,000. So from now on when I fly, <laughs> Carrying my own bomb. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I don't like the tie, is that it? Tie's too ugly for the room, it's okay. It's a magic show, make it a little more presentable. Oh. Oh. Gonna start off with a classic in magic for you. Reproduced for you tonight, exactly as it was done thousands of years ago. Watch closely, you're not gonna believe it. Walking on water. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Jewish people never liked that trick, but then uh, they didn't believe it the first time. <laughs> so I know what you're saying. You're saying, okay, he's a magician. He's got an assistant. Can he levitate his assistant? Can he cut his assistant in half? Good questions. The answer is yes, I can do that. So at this time, I'd like to introduce my lovely assistant. Oh, sorry, Twyla. Here he is. <laughs> Too bad. How are you? Think he looks like me? A little bit? First, we hypnotize the assistant. Come on, assistant, the palladium. There he is, completely hypnotized. Now, believe it or not, without the use of threads, without the use of wires, and without the use of mechanical attachments of any kind, I will attempt to levitate my assistant. All we need is a little levitation music, and we'll begin. <laughs> and levitation music and hard to get good help okay no band they left how about the choir they left well hum come on dan da da dan da da dan Tough crowd. It's okay though, I'm ready for you. Ah, ah look at that. <laughs> okay, you like that so much? Here we go on the same bill. Absolutely no extra charge. Songy to me in half. when I did kid shows. Ho Ho the Magic Clown, that's the name I used when I did kid shows, Ho Ho the Magic Clown, and uh, by the way, I was found innocent of those charges. <laughs> right, just trying to guess the kid's weight. <laughs> well, I know I should have livestock in the act, big magic act, can't afford it, instead I don't need it, I brought with me a backup, Freddy the Train two-dimensional dog. Here he is, what do you think? He's smarter than he looks, he really is. Freddy, come on, show him what you can do. Come on, beg, up, up, up. Up, 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 ho, oh, he did it. All right. Thanks. Boy, 
Well, you deserve a good show. You came here for the last show, so how about something good like Bird from Scarf? Okay, watch closely. <laughs> Thank you. Bird from Scarf, watch closely. Here it is. Bird from Scarf. <laughs> Okay, be honest, how many of you thought I couldn't do a damn thing? <laughs> it's my assistant Spot. Spot, show this guy how you got your name. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Told you not to do that on stage. Excuse me, I hate to do this in the middle of the show, but you've got to discipline these beasts. Can't let them out of hand. Get back to you in a second, sorry. Told you not to do that on stage, didn't I? Hey, that's showbiz. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's okay. <laughs> Take a bow. Okay. There we go. There you go, Spot. By the way, I want you to know that all the great magic you've seen us do here tonight you can listen to on a long playing album. Thank you, Twyla. <laughs> Greatest Sounds of Magic. It's only $14.95, it's a great album. And there's a lot of great stuff on here too. Not just the magic, this album teaches you how to be the life at a party. You ever go to a party, you just sit there, nobody pays attention, nobody comes over? Follow the instructions on this album. It'll teach you how to be the life at a party, no matter how dull or boring you might be. All you have to do is learn this. Don't try it without the instructions. You do this, people will come running over. Here's all you have to do. <laughs> Take us yet, huh? Okay, I'll tell you what. Everyone who buys an album tonight, we're gonna throw in absolutely free with every purchase, believe it or not, a live bird. Now, isn't that a deal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, now how much would you expect to pay, huh? <laughs> Don't answer yet, we got a special deal for you. Everyone who buys an album tonight, we're gonna throw in extra absolutely free, a lovely frame, Suitable for mounting the bird, makes a wonderful a memento of this suspicious, I mean auspicious occasion. Still no takers? Flatten that bird for nothing? Gee, that's too bad. Hey, that was Twyla's favorite bird. Ha, 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 too bad, Twyla. Fast food shop? Uh, yes, that's right. Fast food, yes. I'd like some fast food, please. Right, uh, what would you like? I'd like some fast food, please. Yes, but what sort? There are different sorts of fast food? Yes, yes there are. Thank you very much. I'll just take a few moments to think over what you've said. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'd like, it's me again, by the way. Yes, yes. I'd like some fast food, please. Right, well, we've got burger, cheeseburger, coarsey pounder, coarsey pounder with cheese, double burger, double burger with cheese, double cheeseburger, double burger without cheese. Which of those is the fastest? Well, the coarsey pounder with cheese is quite fast. Then I think we can do business. I'll take the fastest one in the house. Right, there you are. That was fast. Oh, thank you. I can't really imagine how it could have been faster. No, well, we're not very busy at the moment. <laughs> Will you wait it for me, please? Eat it for you? I'd like you to eat it for me, please. Why? I'm in a hurry. <laughs> well, I'm not very hungry, as it happens. I'll give you 20 pounds. 20 pounds? 20 pounds. You're on. All right. If I can watch. But you said you were in a hurry. No, I didn't. You did, you know. I'm in a hurry to stand here and watch you eat it. Why? 50 pounds. 50 pounds? I'll give you 50 pounds if you eat it very fast. You'll give me 50 pounds if I eat a quarter pound of which is very fast. All right. What do you mean, all right? I'll give you 50 pounds if you eat it very fast. Look, it was your idea. Where are you from? I beg your pardon? Where do you hail from? What's your provenance? I'm from the north. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> well, 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 it's in the north. I see. Of England? Yes. Mm. 
Is that a northern accent you've got there? Sort of. <laughs> right, I'll, um, I'll take it then. I beg your pardon? I presume it's for sale. You're soft, you are. I'll pay you handsomely for it. I can't just give you my accent. Well, you can have mine in return. You what? My accent. Berkshire, Harrow, and the Courtauld Institute of Fine Art. <laughs> uh, not sure. Well, some people would pay a lot of money for an accent like this. What people? People who've got a lot of money and haven't got an accent like this. The straight swap, then? That's right. All right. Ready? Yes. Have you given it to me? Mm-hmm. Right, well, let's try it out, then. Um, <laughs> table, chair, floor, ceiling. No, oh, ceiling, I can't like that. Ceiling. Yes, no, I've got your accent, and it's rather peculiar. Mm. Um, cheeseburger. Oh, it sounds strange. Ketchup. <laughs> Mayonnaise. What a strange accent. What, what, what is your job? What do you do? I'm an art critic. Really? Mm. I, I run a fast food joint. Well, I know. Yes. Well, I'll have to hurry you now, because I'm about to close up. Is there anything else you want to eat? Well, what do you recommend? Uh... Well, there's uh, chicken and cold... Honestly, my wife is going to give me hell when I get home. <laughs> do you think we shall find that our lives will have been inexorably altered by the swapping of accents? Well, I suppose they will, yes, because we're the same people underneath, but people will treat us differently. Mm. I suspect that underneath it all, we will find that we are brothers. I beg your pardon? Brothers. Brothers? Mm. No. No? No. No, this is a class establishment. Get out, you filthy northern oik. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, indeed, Stephen Fry, Hugh Laurie there. Always a pleasure as we approach the end of the show. Still lots of good things to come right now, but we have to talk. When Saturday Live goes off the air, we go off the air. While there is going through Parliament a bill which is to stop salacious obscenity on the television. Now, of course, we all support that. No one, I think, in this room, I hope, would want to have salacious obscenity on the television. But what is obscenity? What is this bill concentrating on? What are their examples? Are they talking about Benny Hill tearing women's clothes off at the end of the show and chasing them around the shop? Are they talking about racist gags on early evening comedy? Are they talking about Miss England beauty contest? No! They're talking about the singing detective and the monocled mutineer. Isn't that marvellous? We're being protected. Some middle-class playwright fancies a bonking scene in his play. Nobody particularly watches it, and suddenly the whole British family life is under threat. What are they attacking? What is a beauty contest? What is it? They say, Miss England, a beauty contest. What does it describe? They would say, Miss England describes a, the legitimate admiration of the aesthetic glories of the female form. They could say, it's actually Miss England is a legitimate effort to legitimise the idea of giving every Mr England a stiffy, because that's what it's about, really, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how they judge it, why they judge it the way they do. Let's have a look at poise, let's have a look at what ambitions they want to do when they grow up. They should just have an erection count, shouldn't they? <laughs> they should have a phone in. Well, I'm feeling a bit of a stirring in my loins. I vote for Miss Sunderland. Because <laughs> that's what it's about, but that sounds very rude, doesn't it? Ooh, sounds a little bit rude because you can have the contest but you can't describe the secret process. Benny Hill's Hill's Angels, they're very nice, just a bit of a laugh, they're not rude are they? But if I were to name the name for the person who sits at home watching and thinking, ooh, look at them suspenders, that would be a very rude word indeed. So, what are these double standards? Why do we have them? I think it's because the majority of men fancy women and the majority of TV executives are men. I think if TV companies were run by dogs, we'd probably have cans of Dog food and bonio and chocolate drops are decorating the early evening comedy shows. If it were little boys who ran the TV companies, it'd probably be Action Man and Spider Man who was bringing on the contestants in the game shows. What is it about? All these double standards. I think there is a more sympathetic reason. The, more, the reason that female protuberances are apparently fair game for comedy on the telly, but male protuberances are not, I think, is because, let's face it, your average male protuberance does not look good. Be honest. <laughs> your average nobbly wobbly wobble. And believe me, they're all average, all right. <laughs> well, mine's not. Mine's fantastic. But apart from that, <laughs> oh, but it's fine, so it's the last show I can say it. I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. Yes, indeed. Your average nobbly wobbly woo woo does not look good. Be honest, as it is not the most attractive part of the anatomy. It might feel very nice, but it looks flipping horrible. <laughs> Could you honestly stare yours in its one eye and say, you're an attractive little ding dong? You really are. <laughs> no, you really are. No, you couldn't, because it's bad design badly designed, we've been stitched up by God. That's what happened. After God was looking down the Garden of Eden, sees old Adam strutting around, well pleased with himself. I think I'll stitch that bloke up, eh? Thinks he's pretty, pretty pleased with himself. Bong! What the hell is that? <laughs> what is that? I mean, I'm looking good, but what is this? Put it on Eve! No way. Proves God's a woman. She wouldn't put anything as horrible as that on a woman, would she? Bad design. When they're down Lamborghini, when they're having a look at a new car, when they're saying, oh, look at a new car, lovely design, lovely lines, look at them sleek aerodynamic lines. They don't say, yeah, 
it's not bad lines, but what about the veiny Mars bar effect? Where's that? No! <laughs> I mean, when they got a new building, when they got a lovely new building looking at it, they don't say to the architect, well, fair enough, but when are you going to put the helmet on tomorrow or what? <laughs> I mean, Greek statues, huge muscles, tiny, tiny. Well, they had a good aesthetic view, didn't they? <laughs> what is that about? Nobody knows, nobody knows. So you've got this bill, you've got this strange bill going through Parliament, and people are backing it up. Mrs Whitehouse is coming out right in front, and what she uses as examples, she is saying, EastEnders! EastEnders is nothing but horrible homosexuals and, and salacious pornographic single mums. She is talking about lovely Colin and Michelle here. <laughs> Has she got no heart? Anything can be distorted if you take it out of context. Of course it can. You take something out of context, you make anything look rotten. The Muppets, it is nothing but some randy pig slavering over a camp frog. What's that about to show our kids at five o'clock? Wildlife on one, all it is is sex, violence, eating each other and going to the toilet in the open. I think it's disgusting. <laughs> you can take anything out of context and use it to support a scabrous argument to keep us all down. I could do it, I'll turn the tables. Have you seen the Bible? It is disgusting! Shame and big gap Balthazar and then they married each other incestuously and nailed each other to a tree and then God got annoyed and gave more boils. What sort of thing is that to give five-year-olds? They're reading it! They put the Bible in hotel rooms! Gee, I mean, some, some pervy salesperson goes up to his room, oh, I'll dig me Gideon out, eh? Hey? <laughs> what shall I have tonight? Sadism or incest? <laughs> Now, I know that the Bible's a beautiful book, but you can distort it if you want to, and that's what's going on. So what's the real issue behind? This bloke, this MP, can't remember his name now, he got up in Parliament, he was going on about declining moral standards in Britain. They had been in power for seven years. What was his problem? He had counted all the swear words in the singing detective. All the blood, is he counted them up? This is a Member of Parliament. He's got nothing better to do with his time. He can't talk about unemployment or declining national health. No, he sits at home counting the swear words in a middle class play. Very useful indeed. And that's what he's got. That's what he's using to have a go at us, you see. Now, I don't understand. His bill, his bill says that anything, this is it, and I'm, warned, I'm telling you, this is the truth. I quote, watch out, it's going to happen. The bill says that they're going to have a go at anything that a reasonable person could find offensive. What? is a reasonable person. Is it someone who sits at home counting the swear words on the telly? No. I think that if they're really worried about obscenity, they should worry about real obscenities. I mean, while Ben Hill's chasing the girls round the car park, there's girls who are scared to walk out at night after dark because there's no street lighting. So, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of politics to end there. <laughs> Justified it with a few knob gags, I don't mind. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm a comic for all dimensions. Ladies and gentlemen, we really enjoy this show, but it ain't over yet. We've got lots more music, and then we're going to be back after that. Right now, it's a big, big treat to introduce our big friends. We had them on at the beginning. Let's see them now. We'll see you in a moment. Please now welcome the Inspirational Choir! <laughs>
Inspirational choir, that was fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Let's just hear a quick round of that because it was brilliant. I really did that. That is one hell of a way to go out, but we're not quite saying goodbye yet. We're quite proud. We've done 12 and a half hours of absolutely live entertainment. The most important thing is it's been an astonishing technical achievement. One doesn't want to say too many thank yous, but that really was extraordinary. Well done, everyone at London Weekend. We seem to get the credit and the flack, but they did magic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we really want to say goodbye, but of course, we want to say something in our very own special way to you and the audience at you at home. Dig this, come on. Bye bye, farewell. Oh, and oh, you know it's been swell But now, it's time for us to go So long, so long, Pip Pip We're gonna board, board that ship That ship, we're gonna say The opposite of hello It's all been thanks to you. Has it been thanks to you guys? Yes, it's all been thanks to you. Oh yeah. Um, oh dear. Actually, we're we're, we're a bit under time. We have to do it again. Right. Yes, it's all been. It's all there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and again. <laughs> <laughs>